What's up guys? Today, I wanna actually take you through the step-by-step -step process that I used to manifest a six-figure a year income. What I actually ended up doing for a living was very unexpected, but me being self-employed and making six figures a year was not unexpected. I did spend almost two full years manifesting that. Step number one, affirm what it is you actually want. I am manifesting a business where I sit at home and work on the internet and make six figures a year. That's all I knew. When I say affirm it, I mean affirm it. I am manifesting this. Not, I'm gonna try. Not, I hope. I am manifesting a business where I sit at home and work on the internet and make six figures a year. Through all the research that I had done and the courses and the schooling that I had attended, I knew I was never going to be able to figure out how to make it happen. So you have to let go of the outcome. Let go of how. Let go of when. Let go of why. That's what brings us to the second step, which means you have to get on the path and start doing something. At the time that I made this decision, I hadn't touched a computer in five years. I dove in and I started researching how to start an online business. Click, and I started doing it. I was making minimum wage at the time. I was actually working at a car wash, okay? I lived off of my tips. So I had to dump every spare penny and every spare minute of my time into building online businesses. The most important thing to keep in mind when you get on the path and start doing something is you have to stay on the path. The overwhelming majority of people who get on the path do not end up successful overnight. Now, there are exceptions to that. Some people do. It's not out of the realm of possibility. Those results just aren't typical at all. See, there are two types of manifestations, A-type and B-type. A-type manifestations are the manifestations that we are all familiar with. You know, they're things that are kind of like repeats of past experiences, such as a new car, a new job, making the same amount of money, a new apartment, a new relationship that doesn't work out, you know? Now, the thing about A-type manifestations is that you can take a paper and a pen and write down the steps that it takes to make an A-type manifestation happen. I can literally plan step by step how to make a new car appear in my driveway. Then we have B-type manifestations. Okay, now this is the important thing that we all want to keep in mind. B-type manifestations are those big, huge, life-changing manifestations. Something that is so unlike anything you have ever experienced before that it is going to require you to become a different version of yourself. See, the problem that most people run into is they try to use A-type strategies, planning and plotting and figuring out the whole puzzle in order to bring about B-type manifestations. And it doesn't work that way. See, that part of you that wants to plan and figure it out, you know, like, okay, well, first I got to do this. And then once I do this, then that'll make this happen. And then when this happens, I'll be able to do this. And if this doesn't work, I have a backup plan and I'm going to do it this way. And if that doesn't work, then I'll do it this way. And, and that, that part of you that's trying to figure out that puzzle is the ego analytical critical thinking brain. Okay. So we need to understand what the ego analytical thinking brain is and what it is good at and what it is not good at, okay? The ego analytical thinking brain is really, 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 really good at building defense mechanisms. It's really good at figuring out how to keep you safe. The only thing that this is, is a record of past experiences. That's it. 
That's all this thing is. So nothing that you have ever learned in the past is sufficient enough for you to figure out how to create something that you have never experienced before. If so, you would already have it. So the ego analytical thinking brain is not going to be able to plan step by step how to make this happen. This is where balance comes in because obviously you have to plan something. You have to try to figure something out. But what most people do is they write their plan out and they stick so rigidly to that plan that they get in their own way. You have to get on the path and start doing something. Most likely, the first thing that you try to do is not going to work out for you. When something fails, you don't just give up and abandon the path. That doesn't mean, no, your manifestation is not going to happen. What that means is there was something you needed to learn. Each failure on the path is an opportunity for growth and learning. So what I would do is I would build a business. I would build a website. I would affiliate with a company. I would start promoting their products. I would get onto Google AdWords and start running Google ads. Sure enough, one thing would lead to another and that business would crash and burn. So what would I do? I would pick up from there and say, okay, that's interesting. Let me try it again. And I would build another business. I would hit it from a different angle. And then sure enough, one thing would lead to another and it would crash and burn. And I just kept repeating this process for about two years. All I knew was one of these days, I'm going to be able to wipe my ass with the money that I just lost on that little failure. One of these days, this is going to make sense. One of these days, I'm going to be able to look back on this failure that I just experienced and understand why it was meant to happen that way. The third step, practice any and all manifestation techniques. You can get on YouTube, click manifestation techniques, and hundreds of thousands of videos will come up. And I'm going to tell you what right now, you name it, I tried it. Some of my favorite ones include yellow paper, red ink, and a cigarette lighter. And write, I am whatever it is that you want. So me, I would write something like, I am attracting thousands of new clients. I am making $10,000 a month. I am, and I would just write this over and over and I would fill up the whole page. Then I would go outside and say, it's already done. And I'd light it on fire and burn it. Mantras, find a mantra, something simple, something simple. And just repeat this mantra all day, every day. Like me, for example, I am successful. I am a six figure a year earner. I am successful. I am successful. I make six figures a year. I am successful. I make six figures a year. And when you do that, it's going to feel really strange and really weird at first. It's not going to feel very comfortable. It's going to feel really icky and weird and strange. But affirm what it is that you want. Get on the path and start doing something. Something, something, something. And find a good mantra to repeat all day, every day while you're on the path, while you're building businesses. And, and throughout this whole process, you're changing the way you think. See, here's the thing about financial abundance. It's not actually money that we want. That's not what it is that we're really looking for. Okay. What we are looking for is freedom. We're looking for relief from stress and not having to worry about debt, not having to worry whether or not our bills are going to get paid, not having to worry whether or not we're going to have gas to get where we want to go. What we want is to not need to worry about money. See, the problem most people have is that they are under the impression that you need to get the money first and then you'll feel the freedom and the relief that you want. 
And that's not quite the way that it works. See, the money that you make is a reflection of how you feel about money. No amount of money will ever be a solution to how you feel about money. Take these people out here who end up manifesting winning the lottery. Okay, They slip into that zero gravity state right at the right moment and they win $100 million. Okay, So if you take this person whose baseline frequency is worrying about money, worrying about debt, worrying about getting their bills paid, worry, 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 and you dump $100 million, $200 million on top of that person, is that going to fix their problem? They end up bankrupt in five years because no amount of money created what it was that person was actually looking for. Let's talk about some of the negative aspects of making such a drastic frequency change. One of the first and most important things that you have to understand is that when you get on this path and you start making these changes, you are turning your radio dial to tune in to a new frequency. When you take a look around at your life, look at every person who is a part of your life, look at everything in your life from your coworkers to your friends and family and your car that you drive, the house you live in, every detail that makes up your life is a reflection of the frequency you are currently on. When you get on this path and you start turning that radio dial to tune into a new frequency, you will experience static between you and anything or anyone else that's not making that frequency change with you. So you will have to ignore the naysayers, ignore the haters. And I know it sounds cliche, but yes, you will attract naysayers and haters. It's a cold, hard fact of reality. People don't like seeing you do good. They just really don't. They really do not. And, and it could be people who are very close to you. It could be your mother. It could be your father. It could be your brother, your sister. They're going to try to naysay. Oh, no, don't waste your time doing that. No, that's a waste of time. That's never going to work. And if you surround yourself with these people and you keep hearing them pound this into your head, you're going to kind of start to believe it. You cannot listen to anyone who does not have what you want. And the further you start making it up the mountain on this path, people are going to start getting angry at you. Okay. This is when it's going to become clear to you that success is a mentality. It's not a dollar amount. It's not your status. It's not how popular you are or how many followers you have or, or how big your house is or how nice your car is. Those things are just byproducts or manifestations of your mentality. This is when you start seeing so clearly how many people are in a broke mentality and they desperately, desperately want you on their level. They will desperately attempt to drag you down to their level and pull you off the mountain because they see you doing good and making changes in your life. You have to ignore it. All they're doing is they're projecting their own self-hatred onto you because what you are doing is you are proving that their excuses are bullshit. Nobody likes being handed evidence that their excuses are bullshit. And there's no better evidence that proves your excuses are bullshit than when I am on the same level as you and I climb up out of it and start doing better. Then that's going to prove that your excuses are bullshit. So people will get very angry at you and try everything that they can to pull you off the mountain and back down to their level. They'll try to guilt trip you. They'll try to slander you. They'll try to shame you. You have to let it fly over your head and ignore it. You have to let them manifest their failure 
if they want. They can't manifest your failure, so you have to ignore that. You know how certain you are that the sun is going to rise and set? You don't spend time sitting around thinking about whether or not the sun is going to make it all the way across the sky. You just allow it to happen. This is the, the tunnel vision that you have to acquire. I don't care how. I don't really care when it's going to happen. I just know for a fact it's going to happen. One of the biggest causes of manifestation failure is clinging to something that is being pulled away from you. Like I said, you're making a frequency change. You are slowly turning that radio dial. So anything and anyone that is not also turning the radio dial with you will start being pulled away from you. I'm not saying that you have to go cut everybody out of your life. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is when you begin to make a frequency change and you start tuning in to a new reality, that will happen by default. If anybody is being pulled away from you, release and let them go. If you don't, if you cling to a person, you're like a hot air balloon tied to a sandbag. You can't make that frequency change if you cling to something that's stuck on the old frequency. Probably the most important part of the entire process is stay on the path. Stay on the path. Stay on the path. At the time I made this decision, what I actually ended up doing wasn't even something that I knew existed. Don't be too, too specific about what it is that you want. When you're too specific about what, when, where, and how, you're clamping down, seriously limiting the universe's ability to work for you. There are unlimited ways to make your manifestation happen. You have to get on the path and roll with the flow. Put your foot on the gas, but take your hands off the wheel. When you're building your business or whatever it is that you're doing, and somebody else makes their way into your life and says, no, I got an idea. Here, let's try this. Okay. Be prepared to take unexpected twists and turns. See, it's not that the universe doesn't want to give you what it is that you want. It's that the universe has something in mind for you that you can't even comprehend right now because you are not the version of you that is a frequency match to what the universe has in mind for you. As long as you declare what it is that you are manifesting, get on the path and start doing something and allow the universe to take you by the hand and start guiding you in the right direction, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. From the minute you make the decision that you're going to manifest what it is that you want to manifest, from that point forward, you have to assume that anything that happens from that point forward is part of the process of creating your manifestation. The last and final step is that you need to connect to that version of you out there in the quantum field who has what you want. You want to connect to that and stay connected to it. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to kind of reverse engineer your manifestation on a quantum level. So I can look out my window and I can see a mountain. Okay. Now paint this picture in your mind. I'm going to run through a little mental exercise that you can use. I don't know if you live anywhere where there's mountains. I live in Las Vegas, so there's a mountain valley surrounding us, and I like to use this. I'm imagining that that version of me that has what I want is on the top of that mountain out there. That mountain is probably maybe 20 or 30 miles away. So imagine this. You have a magical fishing pole, okay, with a hook on the end of it. And you see that version of you on top of that mountain that has what you want, and you and you hook onto it, and you're reeling yourself towards that version of you. You're connecting to that version, and you're staying connected to it, 
and allowing the universe to pull you in that direction. So what's the journey going to be like between here and there? Who knows? I have no idea what I'm going to encounter, what twists and turns I'm going to take, who I'm going to meet, what I'm going to learn from people that I meet along the way. But whatever happens, it's part of the journey of me getting to the top of that mountain. So you want to picture yourself in the future already having what you want and looking back on you now. What is it that you're saying? No matter what you're going through right now, picture yourself in the future having what you want. Look back in the past at what you're going through now, thankful because what you're going through now was part of the journey to create it. And you have to stay connected to that version of you. And no matter what happens, I don't care what happens. I don't care if you lose all your money on a crypto investment. I don't care if your entire business crashes and burns. I don't care what happens. Whatever happens, immediately connect to that version of you that has what you want and look back at this thing that just happened as if it was a blessing in disguise. Imagine you're telling the story to somebody about your manifestation journey and you're adding this little thing that just went wrong into the story as if it was part of the process. And if you stay connected to that version of you that has what you want and you stay connected, it has no choice but to manifest. I know at least one person needed to hear that. And as long as one person takes one thing that they heard me say and uses it to completely transform their life, then my job is complete. I'm out of here now, y'all. I wish you love, luck, light, and prosperity on your journey. Y'all stay blessed.